So hello everyone a new week and new interesting topic So a couple of months back I came across a list called as National List of Essential Medicine and it got me to thinking that what exactly are essential medicine in the first place So in this particular video we are going to look at what is essential medicine what are national list of essential medicine and why they play a very important role in governing the entire healthcare of a particular country So let's start this video So first we must understand what is going to be the focus of this session. In the first section we are going to understand what exactly are essential medicine and what is national list of essential medicine. We are also going to look at the history of essential medicine and what is the global paradigm of this medicine. Then we are going to focus on what is the exact criteria for a medicine to be declared as essential medicine and what is the designation of it. and then we'll understand what is the purpose of declaring such list of essential medicines and then finally what are the challenges and issues with declaring such list and how it affects the healthcare of a common person so coming on to the big question what exactly are national list of essential medicines so the union ministry of health maintains a national list of essential medicine called as nlem which satisfy the priority healthcare needs of a population so essential medicine is nothing but a list that is prepared considering the disease prevalence efficacy safety and comparative cost effectiveness of the medicine so this list focuses on a particular criteria in which it targets the prevalent disease for example there was requirement of covid vaccine or covid related concomitant medication so such medication which affect a large part of population which is a safety measure and which requires the entire population to be affordable so that are included in the essential medicine list and this particular list is not only put a threshold on price ceiling okay but it also helps population the large scale and this price ceiling is fixed by national pharmaceutical pricing authority also called as nppa so this is the government authority which fixes a set price so that that medication cannot be sold in the higher cost and it is affordable to all the population the ministry of health and family welfare is responsible for preparing this medicines in india and the first list of essential medicine was in the year 1966 in india which consisted of 279 medicine the first list after 1966 the list was subsequently revised in 2003 2011 2015 and and when i came across in 2022 so the latest draft the latest published national list of essential medicine is in the year 2022 So if you want to make a successful career in clinical research and move forward in this robust field so make sure that you have the right kind of tools right kind of certification so our friends at clinical aim research institute provide excellent advanced certification in clinical research where they teach you clinical research fundamentals as well as uh, cdm and pharmacovigilance so go ahead call on these numbers and give them a try and make your career brighter So now let us understand what exactly is the history of NLEM. So the first country in the world to compose the essential medicine list was Tanzania. I know it was surprising for me also and that was in the year of 1970. Then in the year 1975 the World Health Assembly later that became WHO even assisted the member state in selecting and procuring the essential medicine and assuring that you get a good quality of medicine but at a reasonable cost. Subsequently the first WHO model list of essential medicine was published in the year 1977 which contain 186 medicine now this WHO model list is released every 2 years and this particular list is focused on at most important of the basic medic medicines the indispensable and necessary nature of the health as well as the population at large and the criteria of selection are based entirely upon efficacy safety quality and cost so keeping that in mind the 
model list of essential medicine is released by WHO and the respective country then takes those medication and customizes based upon the need of their population and they fix a particular cost with a certain quality. Now we must understand what is the criteria for national list of essential medicine of a country. So when it comes to criteria for national uh, list of essential medicine, there are several factors that are critical before you declare a drug in that particular list. The first factor is essentiality. A medicine should be essential considering that what is the population of that country and how does it fit in that particular list and needs and requirement of that country. Next thing is the changing disease burden. Okay, so with time, uh, several diseases uh, keep coming in the country. For example, the COVID, H1N1, H1N2. Okay, and that point of time, what particular list are required and what particular medication are required that are required to be tackled. Okay, and for example, at one point of time, it can be tuberculosis. The next month, it can be COVID-19. So depending upon the requirement, the prevalence of a disease, the list is declared. And considering they prepare a particular list. The next factor is efficacy and safety. So the medicine which comes under list needs to have unequivocally the evidence of efficacy and wider acceptance based on the safety to be included in the list. So whatever medication the government is including in this list, it has to be safe and efficacious. Next criteria is being cost effective and I think this is one of the most important criteria because a lot, large part of population particularly in India struggles to find quality medicine at an affordable price. Okay, like my last video on generic medicine, you can make some medicine generics but if some medication are still under the patent protection but you have to provide it to the large case of population then you have to think about cost effectiveness. So the total price of the treatment must be considered in this case and that has to be taken care of by including that drug in that particular list. So only the per unit price may not be uh, best for this particular benchmark but the entire treatment has to be considered. Then the next criteria is fixed dose combination. So the single dose medicine are con uh, considered for inclusion in LLEM but if there are fixed dose combination they are only needed to have proven advantage concerning the therapeutic effect. So that is also one of the criteria. Then the final criteria is turnover. So high sales turnover alone is not the factor for considering good uh, benchmark. For example, a lot of people take Comiflam for uh, pain killing uh, requirements, but that is not a single criteria because it's popular. Okay. So what is the turnover? How effective is it? And other factor which are mentioned above that are also considered when it comes to preparing that particular list. So these were the criteria for NLEM. So now coming on to understand why exactly do we need a national list for essential medicine. So the first purpose of preparing this list is to guide a safe and effective treatment of priority disease condition in the population. So for example, when there is COVID prevalence, then we have to create a list, a uh, list of medication, which can ensure that we have safe medication as well as effective treatment. Also, we prepare this list to promote rational use of medicine so that a large part of population can afford this medication at a particular price. And also we have to optimize the available health resource in the country. Okay. If those health resources are not shared with the larger part of population, then it can even lead to that pandemic going out of control. So we have to prepare document and guidances in which the state governments also prepare list of essential medicine and depending upon the prevalence, they procure the list of supplies that are requirement. Okay. For the, uh, from the public sector to provide to the masses. And this particular list is also made in consideration uh, with, I, as I said earlier, disease prevalence, efficacy, safety, comparative cost effectiveness of the medicine. Okay, so these are the most important four criteria. And such medication should be available in such a way that the individual or the community can afford it. 
not a particular section or society but the entire country and the individuals in it should be able to afford it that is the main purpose of such list and if someone asks you that when is this list updated for for who it is updated by every two years by the expert committee and when once that list is published then the government also customizes it depending upon its requirement and again they will release their own national list okay so the global list is released by who and the national list by a particular country so now let's understand what are the challenges or the issue in drug pricing regulation of this particular medicines so the first issue uh, would be that these medicines are mostly sold on per unit basis in india and regulating the cost of the strips uh, the entire strip is not effective because you have to understand that although most uh, medicine are being sold uh, loosely in retail basis but the when it comes to the entire strip then that is not essentially pass the benefit to the customer also so that is one of the problem again this access to the essential medicine is very low because there is very low of uh, how do i say reach from the uh, government okay for example we have pradhan mantri jan aushadi yojana which pro uh, promotes generic medicine but a lot of people uh, do not know about it so access to this medication is also one of the challenges also uh, the indian nlm comprises of 348 drugs okay but there are a lot of drugs and this leaves out many essential medicine uh, under price control so so the person who requires drug for other kind of treatment they cannot afford that treatment so it limits to 348 medicine and it leaves the other medicine as it is which becomes a burden on the healthcare of the country and the common man the other issue would be that it does not cover the combination of the drug okay so it focuses on only one drug but what if that drug comes under combination so if a price control drug is combined with a non price control drug then it will come out as a price control drug it should ideally happen that but when it comes to combination the rules are very uh, different to understand and therefore they are not essentially included in the list then if a country uh, if a company uh, makes a mistake for non compliance for uh, for non quality medication then there are no certain penalties for those company okay and there is no particular order from the national pharmaceutical pricing authority also so uh, rules are very very loose in this uh, particular sense so that has to be stringent uh, from the government regulatory authority so that the common man can be rest assured that whatever medicine i am getting that is of a certain quality and certain efficacy so that is a, one of the major challenge then a particular drug is also deleted from this uh, list okay so not essentially that uh, the drug will remain in this list they are uh, also removed okay so if they find a particular drug is not effective or causing damage then it gets banned from india if it gets banned from india it is removed from the nlm and if there are also any safety concern then also a particular drugs get banned and removed from this list so this list is updated uh, considering the quality concern and the priority and if a particular medicine with better efficacy so we have a better medicine with better efficacy then the medicine in this list can also be dropped and that medication can be included okay so that considers the fav uh, favorable safety profile and better cost effectiveness okay so these are two uh, critical criteria when the medicine is removed or updated in this particular list so i hope it was a good learning experience for all of you and thank you for watching this video till the end make sure that uh, you share it with a lot of people so that we can educate and promote uh, awareness and help in health affordability and please make sure you uh, like share and subscribe it is very important for our growth also and for the entire healthcare community in india thank you so much